Okay, so we're on to our next video um, or our next topic. And that's going to be, we're going to be talking about what programs are. Now here it's really, it's I'm saying the language of computers, but really I'm referring to the language that um, people use in order to interact with a computer, right? So what is a computer program? So the first thing you have to think about when you're, you know, you're not just writing a program to write a program. You're writing a program because you have some problem or some concept that you want to find a solution to that problem. So that's what it's all about. It's really first finding the solution. And then once you have the solution to the problem, then you want to come up with an algorithm or an algorithm is a set of steps. Like we said in the previous video, that's that recipe. It's that set of steps that you need to follow um, in order to enact that solution. And then finally you get to the computer program, which is to take that algorithm and decode it into a program using some programming language. So a programming language is, um, it uses, I'm just gonna read the slide for a moment. It uses the combinations of numbers, words, symbols, and formatting. Right, so format would be like you have to indent something to tell a computer what to do in a way that it can understand. So the programming language that you're using is um, give, using words that might mean something to you and then behind the scenes that's actually going to be translated into machine code if you wanna think about it, something that, um, that the computer itself could understand. So let's see what that looks like, right? So how do computers read code? So um, you write your code, right? That print hello world is actually a Python program that will put print to the screen, the, wor the words that you're asking it to print, which is hello comma world, right? And then what goes on is that there's either a compiler or what's called an interpreter that takes the code that you have written and it translates it into machine code. And machine code, if you were to look at it, would be binary. And binary means that it is either, that it, that it has two values, a zero or a one. You could think about it as an on or an off or a true or a false. And then once it's in that machine code, right, then it could go ahead and do its processing. So from your perspective, really, um, you know, you're just going to be involved with writing the program, but there is a value to understanding both binary and hexadecimal, which we'll talk about in a minute, how to understand how the computer is using the code that you're putting in. So what we're all used to is base 10, right? And base 10, as we know, uses 10 digits from zero to nine. And then the positions tell you right, what each number actually means. So the first position tells you how many ones there are. The second position tells you how many tens there are. And the third position tells you how many hundreds there are. So in this case, the number 237 would be two hundreds, three tens, and seven zeros. So, you know, this is what you grew up with. So this is extremely intuitive to you as opposed to binary, which is not necessarily something that you grew up with. Now I want you to notice something. So the, the first position is always going to be your ones. Since this is tens, this is 10 to the first power. And notice this one's gonna be 10 to the second power. And then, you know, if we were gonna go one over, right? If we had thousands, it would be 10 to the third power. Now the same thing is true if you're looking at a binary system, right? So this would be, two to the zeroth power, which is ones, right? So whereas in the um, base 10, you can get anywhere from zero to nine. Remember in base two, it could only be zero or one. So the first place, this represents one. If there was a zero here, it would represent zero, right? So the second place, this would be two to the one. So how many twos are there? Two to the two, two to the three, so on and so forth. So Right, so here's some examples. So the number three would be one in the first place and two to the one. So this would be two plus one would give you three. Not to go through all of them, but let's just choose six. So six is one of two to the second power, which is a four, one of two to the first power, which would be a two, and zero then of two to the zero power, which would be a one. So you have four plus two, which is gonna give you six. 
Another way you can think about it is like light bulbs, because technically that's really what it is, one on and one off. So if we take that same number, 237, this is what it would look like. Or you can translate these light bulbs back into here, right? So um, this one represents 128 times one, because that's right, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So two to the seventh is 128. 64, which is, right, is times one. So that's gonna give you that 64. In the 32 position, it's 32 times one. The 16 is off. You don't need any 16s in order to accumulate to 237. So you're not gonna have anything there. You need one eight, one four, nothing in the two position, right, and one. So it's not so important that you're really able to, you know, translate these numbers back and forth, but it's something that you should at least be aware of what each of, like if you, when you see something written out, zero, one, zero, 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 you should at least go back and say, okay, I understand what that means. I understand what each of those positions means, meaning similar to how base 10 works, base two works in a very similar way. It's just with binary digits and a base of two as opposed to the base of 10. So that's how you represent numbers, but you also need to have a way of representing letters. And um, the American standard for information interchange, which is called ASCII, you'll be hearing, you know, you'll, that I'm saying th this um, abbreviation the way it is pronounced is ASCII, and it assigned each letter a binary code. So for example, the letter A is assigned the number 65, which would look right like that. It would look that zero, one, so on and forward to one and one in the end. So this is a 64, and then plus one is gonna give you 65. Now you can ask, like how would it know if it's if that number 65 is supposed to be the number 65 or if it's letter A? And that's what's going to happen within your program. Your program is going to either designate that piece of memory as being the letter A, and then it will know internally that that 65 represents the letter A as opposed to the number 65. Um, just some terminology. <laughs> um, I strongly feel like when you go into a particular field, you need to know the, you know, the language of that field. And that's when terminology comes into play. It's not necessarily something that you need to set and memorize, but it's something that you should be able to recognize. And if need be like, look up quickly, right? So you don't necessarily need to remember that a kilobyte is a thousand bytes, but you should hear a kilobyte and you should say, okay, I know what a byte is, right? So, you know, it's, it's some storage of memory, right? So I should be able, I can go back and look and understand, right? That a terabyte is so much more than a kilobyte and so on and so forth. So that bit is that first piece of information. It's just, it's just short for a binary digit and it represents that one position, right? So it's either a zero or a one. And a byte, right, <laughs> is actually eight bits. And it could hold up to 255, um, the count of, the number that it could hold the largest of is 255. And if you go back and you look at how we looked at the different positions, if you go up to the eighth position, that's the number that it could actually hold. And then this is just, you know, informational. So your kilobyte is a thousand bytes, your megabyte is a million bytes, your gigabyte is a billion bytes. You've seen this if you've ever gotten, you know, um, read up about like, you know, computer purchasing, right? So it'll talk about how many gigabytes or sometimes now you, you have memory in a terabyte. So you'll have one terabyte of information, right? Um, that, that a computer potentially could store. And another thing that you should know is how it encodes colors. So um, the way it encodes colors is actually in hexadecimal and hexadecimal is base 16. So base 10 is zero to nine and what it, how it reaches to 16, it actually turns into letters, right? So it gets zero to nine, that's the first 10 and then it needs to go through A, B, C, D, E, F. Okay, so you'll see sometimes numbers that look like a combination of um, letters and numbers and that means that you're talking in hexadecimal, you're talking in base 16. 
Um, so the way it encodes colors, right, it is it has three different RGB, which is red, green, and blue. Each one of these can go up to 255. And between these three colors, any combination of these three colors, red, green, and blue, it can get up to 16 million colors. Um, so just, you might see something like that, right? So FF, right? So the letters A to F, so your 16 characters, like I said, is zero to nine and then A to F. So your FF and then all zeros would look like an RGB that FF would represent 255 followed by zero, zero, right? So that would be for green and blue. And then it would visually, it's gonna be a red. This is more to introduce you to these concepts than it is that I would, you know, I would expect you to be able to memorize it. Um, you should be comfortable with the fact that letters can be represented in hexadecimal and that you might get this six digit hexadecimal looking piece of information to represent the numbers. More likely, you'll see something like that, right, where you're going to see three numbers, but these three numbers could then be translated into three hexadecimal values. Okay, that's enough of uh, introduction to what computers are, you know, how computers are taking your program in and what the background looks like in information.